So my Yoga Shakti uh, asked me to uh, read a verse today. And I chose Radharasa Sutta Nidhi, verse 22, but I want to say something. <laughs> something I find very surprising and also exciting. My Yoga Shakti, uh, she wrote me that I should chose the verse. And I chose the verse. But honestly speaking, you all know that this book, which we published, is a, a mixture of three commentaries. It is the commentary of Madhusudan Das Babaji, Ananda Gopal Goswami, and my beloved Gurudev Shri Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj. So my god brother, Hari Charan in America, he translated the original book from Baba from Bengal into English. So when you read only Baba's words compared to what we have here, like my yoga shakti can confirm it's quite something it's different it's even it's more there and i will add if the, it's missing in this because it's not a very long purport but baba's purport in his original bengali book is much longer and there are many uh, there are several points more in the original bengali book and the translation from my god brother is wonderful so um, I will read now the verse from which we have the mixture of the three commentaries and I will add then what is more in Baba's original book which is exclusively Baba's book. So next time I am allowed to choose a verse I will choose one uh, solely and exclusively only Baba's words. So I will send it earlier to you that you have it earlier and that we can then see that uh, actually uh, when Gurudev was in uh, in uh, Switzerland in Krishnananda's house, Gurudev was reading from the original Bengali book of Radharasa Sudhanidhi and it is very, it's quite different. Um, so uh, please allow me to add those uh, parts and paragraphs which are not in this uh, uh, mixture, in the summary, which Advaita does so wonderfully did. Of course, there are also Baba's words there, but I will put this verse 22, I will put it in Radha Dasam so that you can see what Baba himself, he exclusively wrote, only his words, so that you can see that there is much more there. Is that okay? <laughs> Good. So the verse goes Sad Brema Sindhu Makaranda Rasau Katahara Saran Achasram Abita Shrabat Ashriteshu Shiradike Tava Kada Charanara Vindam Govinda Jeevana Danam Sirasa Vahami. So I'm reading now from the book and then I will also read from Baba's original uh, trans, uh, Baba's original tika translation of the verse, and I will try to read very slowly. <laughs> yes, I have to force myself. I know. Oh, Shiradike, when can I? I have to put on the light. Sorry. When can I carry your lotus feet, which contain a constant great stream of honey nectar that flows from the ocean of love toward the surrendered souls? And that are the wealth of Govinda's life upon my head so i read this from the summary in this tika and in baba's own tika he is much more focusing on that point you will see later that this honey nectar that flows from the ocean of love 
toward the surrendered souls. Baba will say quite a few more things than which is now there in this tikka, in this summary of the tikka. I will add that when we come to this point. So I repeat the verse. O Shiradike, when can I carry your lotus feet, which contain a constant great stream of honey nectar that flows from the ocean of love toward the surrendered souls, and which are the wealth of Govinda's life, when can I carry these lotus feet upon my head? Commentary, this is now the summary of the three commentaries. Swamini is mad when she rushes out to meet Shyam and her maidservants feel intolerable distress when they think of how she must be hurting her tender feet on the way, just as the gopis were very worried about Sri Krishna's feet during the Rasa Leela. Baba is not, this is not from Baba, this is not, this Baba commences his tikka in a very different way, but we come to that later. Um, now comes a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 31, 19. Oh, dearly beloved one, these are the gopis speaking to Krishna. We carefully place your delicate lotus feet upon our breasts, being very much afraid that they will be hurt while you wander in the forest. Our hearts feel very much pain when they think of how you must hurt your feet while walking over the thorns and pebbles on the forest path. Because of their pure and selfless love for Krishna, the gopis are very worried about his comfort and happiness. Therefore, they carefully place his lotus feet upon their breasts. In the same way, the sakis and manjaris, who are the leaves and the flowers on the desire vine of love for Krishna, are very concerned about the welfare of Sri Ratha, who is the desire vine herself. Sri Pat, absorbed in his manchari swarup by the grace of Sri Man Mahaprabhu, Prabhupada Saraswati, got this mercy that he could identify himself as a manjari, anxiously says, Haradhe, you have forgotten your body in the ecstasy of worshipping Krishna. But we, your poor maidservants, lose our minds when we think of how your feet, which are more tender than Shirasa flowers, may be hurt when you are on your way to meet Krishna. So here you can see the manjaris, this is your mind. They are always concerned about the welfare of the Swamini. They always think, oh, how can we protect her? How can we? make everything more easier for her. This is the life goal and this is the aspiration of the Manjaris. And Sri Pat, he feels, Prabhupada Saraswati, he himself, he feels like that. How can a loving maidservant 
tolerate the thought of any pain felt by the tender lotus feet of Srimati. So like Suniti last, last time said that this feeling that Swamini is mine, I have to take care of Swamini. This is a very wonderful meditation that we in our spiritual Swarup can always think of how can we be of any assistance and of any help for, for Swamini. And here it is protecting her tender lotus feet. And uh, Prabhupada Saraswati said, um, Oh, Sri Radhika, please place these lotus feet on my head. Don't place them on the ground of Braja. I will carry these feet, which are millions of times dearer to me than my own life. This is Manjari Bhav. This is the Tzenit of Manjari Bhav. This statement, we cannot fake it. It must come from those who are realized, like our Mahatmas. Hmm. On my head and bring you myself to your beloved Shama Sundara. And now comes this. Baba is giving more emphasis on this in his own tikka. This is a very wonderful verse. Uh, wonderful words. There is an unbroken stream of honey nectar flowing from the ocean of pure, selfless love. That are these lotus feet toward the surrendered devotees, which are and who are practicing Manjari Bhav Upasana. So this is a very, very, very deep statement. There is so much in this statement, and Baba is um, going to to say more on this because here this ends in this commentary but baba is explaining more deeper then mm, this is such an important statement that radhika's lotus feet are like a stream of honey love what is that meaning of this the meaning of this is that everything comes through the feet therefore when we touch the feet of the great souls their mercy is infused in our heart. And who has the most love? Radhika. Madanakya Mahabhav and every inch, every milliliter of that ocean of love is flowing through her lotus feet. And here it said, it is an unbroken stream of honey nectar flowing to the surrendered devotees. This means that this is our goal, that we should surrender ourselves and the goal should be that this honey stream one day will be available in our heart. So I will read very slowly now what Baba is saying in his beautiful, beautiful commentary. This is now not in the book, so I will read very slowly. Baba is saying, the decree of a Bhakta's desire determines the decree of his delight. So the more we desire and the more lopa we have, the more pleasure and bliss will we get in sadhana. Through this intense thirst, Sri Prat Prabhunanda Saraswati has received visions of divine Lila and directly tasted Seva Rasa in his Siddha Swarupa. Even at the sadhana stage, one can have some experience of this. If the sadhaka gets some realization during meditation, he thinks, I got a little response. The Acharyas have also experienced Seva Rasa and propagated it very widely. 
just as Sripad is getting wonderful experiences of Radha Rasa through his visions, the bhava filled, charming, Madura poetry and knowledge of Lila Rasa flowing from his pen are attracting the admiration of the great Rasika devotees of this world. So he Baba is saying this is this is what 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 uh, what is to be aimed at that we also can experience in our sadhana stage little by little experiences the Mahatmas are also doing. And how can we do it and why can we do it? Because they they left it. They left them for us. It's like we are eating their Mahaprasadam. When we read the nectar of their words, it can be also very deep into our hearts. It can touch our heart very much. So then Baba is saying, let me just find it. Mm -hmm. These lotus feet, which are more precious to her, to the manjari, than millions of lives, always remain within her gentle heart. How can the Kinkari's love tolerate such hardship? And now she says, I shall take those feet to Shyama Sundara, bearing them on my head as though they were millions of my lives. At the appearance of pure devotion to her lotus feet, by the mercy of those feet, their qualities are spontaneously revealed within the heart. This has been described in the verse by two adjectives. Sat prema sindhu makarananda rasaukata rasaram achasram abhita shravat ashiteshu. The meaning is that the stream of nectar from the ocean of eternal love flows through her lotus feet to continuously shower those who have taken shelter. This pure love reaches its zenith in the manjaris. Now Baba is giving very clear the point what it means when this stream reaches. This pure love reaches the zenith in the manjaris because they have taken exclusive shelter of Sri Radha's lotus feet. A stream of nectar flowing from the ocean of pure love continuously rains upon them. They have reached the highest stage of purity. They are called manjaris, and by nature, they are also manjaris. The manjaris do not give enjoyment to the bee. Just as a creeper's sprig increases a bee's desire for its fully blossomed flowers, in the same way, these manjaris, by their skillful seva and most charming natures, increase Matusudan's desire for Sri Radhika. This is the power of taking exclusive shelter at Sri Radha's lotus feet. The nectar of pure love always falls from Sri Radha's lotus feet. And this nectar does not consist of just a few drops like the nectar of a lotus of this world. This nectar pours 
like a waterfall in endless stream upon those who have taken shelter. So this is not in the, in the published edition from Advaita, but it is most, most beautiful. And it gives so much hope that this stream of love, which is flowing from the lotus feet of Swamini, will enter the hearts of those souls who have taken exclusive shelter at Manjari Bhav Sadhana. And we are, I am so thankful to Srila Sadhu Maharaj, our beloved Gurudev, and to my Gurudev, Srila Anandadas Babaji Maharaj, that we can take this path. We can bow our heads and we can ask, please let this honey stream of nectar fall upon our head. This is the only way to reach perfection. That this honey stream of nectar, which is said in this verse, will fall straight and directly on our head. How is this possible? This is only possible by the mercy of Sri Gurudev, by Guru Kripa, Sadhu Sangha, and Vaishnava Kripa. This stream of pure nectar coming from the lotus feet of Swamini can only reach our hearts when the heart, like Gurudev said in America, Gurudev, you remember, when you said this in America in the church, in this uh, uh, priest's house, that our hearts, they should be like containers. They should have no holes. It should be completely fixed, and then the mercy can stay in the heart, which is a container. And the container, Gurudev said, is made of humility. And we make holes in that container by our apparats. And as long as we make holes in that container, it cannot hold this creeper. So Gurudev said it should be made of humility. It should be fixed. It should be strong so that this creeper can hold, be hold there. And Baba is saying, it's not just a little drop of nectar. It's like a waterfall of nectar coming from the lotus feet of Radhika do those who have taken shelter. That is very wonderful. If someone wants to share something on that, otherwise I will continue with the published edition. I find this very beautiful that this is not just an imagination, but the Mahatmas, they really, they really see and feel that this nectar is not, not just a drop, but like a waterfall. Maybe someone else wants to share on that. Otherwise, I continue. Rade, Rade. So, Ravani, Jai Ho. I wanted just to say, Tarun, this reminds me that actually this is our Darya. This is what is coming from Swamini yes. to us. So this is our Darya, actually. A very nice description. This is all I want to say. Thank you very much for this description and this sharing. And I just wanted to uh, shortly... Um, share that the beginning of the verse like it was here in this it was explaining how the gopis feel when they worship krishna and it it shows that the feelings of the gopis towards krishna they are similar than the feelings of the mandris towards swamini it is the feeling of taking care even motherly sometimes worried if our you know is my body is even too hard for you for your sweet and soft lotus feet and in the same way the mandris they have this one pointed love towards swamini and swamini is so much 
like Krishna says, I can never repay you. So in the same way, and even more merciful, Shrimati Radhika is calling her maidservants with her love and is giving a stream of honey nectar, like Baba says. And that honey nectar that is coming by developing the mindness, the feeling of I belong to you and you belong to me. So that is very sweet and also very uh, uh, special that Baba is giving these feelings more condensed even in other purports. Like also I feel that if we would write down all the lectures that our dear Gurudev has given, if we would transcribe them, I don't know how many times now in the past 10 years we have been reading all the verses of Vilapakashmanjali and the purports. And always, our oh, Gurudev, he's so much uh, worshipping all the Vaishnavas and especially also Ananta Das Babaji. So we see that in all the moments there are different, different feelings coming up. And that's what he wants us to also learn, to teach, to live in the feelings that we have while we are connecting with the scriptures or with the vanis of our great teachers. And that uh, I'm thankful, Tarun Baba, that you have chosen some hidden, <laughs> hidden, edi you know, edition <laughs> or hidden commentary. So I also. Oh, Rasunda also wants to end. Nade, nade, my dears. So nice to see all of you. Today we had a morning class about emptiness, empty pot. And Tarun, gee, you said about uh, holes in this pot, right? Yes. There are some holes in the pot and uh, this morning we uh, some devotees like to describe the, uh, uh, the Buddhism that they make uh, <clears throat> empty the pot. So they are uh, contrary to our philosophy. We try to fill up the pot and close all these holes in the pot. So to fill it with what you said, uh, nectar, stream, of Swamini's honey -like nectar, or what you say. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is also a uh, uh, continuing this morning class. So this pot has to be uh, uh, closed, uh, so no uh, no holes, so that we can uh, carry this nectar of our Swamini and. This nectar is our love to her in relationship. So this is very contrary to, to make empty. We don't like emptiness. So I feel the whole day very empty because so much discussion of emptiness. <laughs> now we feel it. Now you, now you, you help me and again, I can fill it up. This empty pot of heart, so with the honey stream of our Swamini. Thank you very yeah. much. So the next, so sorry, next sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. I, I also would like to add something. Thank sorry. you. Sure, for sure, much. for sure. Because I've just read it uh, by Krishna Chandra. It's um, he gave lectures to Damoda Astakam, and he he says that we are also kripa patra that means we are the vessel for mercy and that means for our souls generations of souls have prayed that we could become the vessel of kripa Dial. This is <laughs> going down deeply to this. 
Mm. This is very beautiful because without mercy, we cannot even make one step. Nothing in Raganuga Bhakti, everything is depending on the mercy. Bhakti, uh, Rupa Goswami is saying, Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu, only the mercy of the Vaishnavas can help us advance in, in uh, Raganuga Bhakti. So the next, I will go now to the published edition because now the next paragraph is straight from Baba's purport. So this is only Baba's words right now. The word Sat Prema in the verse can also mean love for Krishna, the absolute truth. There is an endless stream of I, nectar. Gurudev, you want to say something? <laughs> but I'm listening. I want to say something. Please. That is, uh, I want to know more about Adharya. One day I listen, Gaurvani from Chaitan Chaitamrit is explaining about Adharya. That I want from Gaurvani to explain more Adharya. Wow. What is Mahaprabhu Adharya? Wow. Second thing, also I want to, from the Gauranga Sundar, I want to listen something about the Gopi Bhav mentioned, like you also little share us, what is the Bhav last Wow, very nice. Two, two subjects. <laughs> and what is Unnat Ujjal Rasa? Wow. Radhe. Thank you. I'm sorry, Tarun Baba. Uh, no, no, no. I didn't Go expect ahead. that. <laughs> All good. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I much more enjoy listening. Gurudev wants me to uh, take this again up. Um, we were reading actually in a verse of Radha Sudanidi, where it was explained that Swamini is forgetting herself and Krishna is forgetting himself and we all know what that means. It's the topmost, it's the Brima Vaichitya of Swamini where she thinks of herself actually at that she is Krishna. So it's about when she is wearing the yellow dhoti of Krishna. So actually, in this state of madness, completely mad kind of her Mahabhav, the Kinkari is coming in and is doing her seva. What does the Kinkari is actually doing? She's taking the black hair out of the face of Swamini because Swamini is just seeing black. She's completely serving black. We know what we mean with this black, blackish person. So she is losing herself completely in black. So this is actually her gener generosity of Mahabhav. It's the highest form of Mahabhav she is generously giving to her beloved. And him it gives the highest state of ecstasy so that he himself is forgetting him complete. So out of this situation actually, this is actually the honey drop one part. But then Ananda Das Babaji is mentioning in the same explanation that this is one kind, but there is another one. The love from Swamini dropping down to us like this honey stream. This is actually the honey stream Tarun Baba just mentioned. This endless Mahabhav, this ecstasy, the highest form, which is actually this Unat, 
Uchwala Ras. This is dropping down through the great souls, through the parampara to us. It's coming from the feet. It's a kind of stream like the Yamuna who is flooding everything around. This is actually, we can compare this stream of Radharani's highest feelings of love is also coming down to the mandraris because she actually is calling the mandraris or the kinkaris are entering in the right time into the nikunja and performing this seva so they are getting that and this actually this kind of love this generosity of radharani's love this is the udarya which is coming down through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to us. And this is most astonishable and we cannot really get the point by understanding. We can only get the point by going into the Sita Deha, into the feelings body, transcendental feeling body and try to receive it. And this actually will nourish the Sita Deha. By this honey, this is actually the mother milk of Swamini. We will grow. So I hope I got it together, Gurudev. Uh, it was just in the remembrance. My remembrance is not so good these days. <laughs> Goranga Sundara, please go forward. So, dear devotees, please give me your mercy to survive. <laughs> I will just, this is the best way to continue where my god brother Goravani stop. I will just to continue there because it's much secure position. So he was glorifying Audarya Rasa, actually. Audarya, this mercifulness, gracefulness of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the part of Madhurya Rasa. Very confidential part of Madhurya Rasa, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought in this Kali Yuga. And he brought that, and we are results of this mercy, of his gracefulness. Now we are in situation that we are listening about this Madhurya Rasa, but not, but specific part of Madhurya Rasa, Paraki above, hidden love, which is present only in Vrindavan. And this Madhurya Rasa, is divided in two different relationships. Saki Bhav, and this is the Saki's girlfriends of Shimata Radharani, her expansions, and they are, they have loving relationship with Krishna and some of them very close girlfriends they have loving relationship with both of them so we call it Sakiba but there is another part of Madhurya Rasa which was hidden so many yugas, so many centuries, millions and millions years, we can say, until Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared and he gave this Unatojwa Ras. And this is relishing, confidential, honey-like, amorous pastimes, but not through the angle and relationship of Sakis, but through the angle 
of Radharani's maidservants, Manjaris. And we heard many times that this kind of relishment is very often is called Bhavo Lasa Rati. So this kind of Bhavo Lasa Rati is very the most bright Ulas, most bright madness, Rati, intoxication. When these Manjaris are serving Bhava Mai, embodiment of Baya, embodiment of Mahaba, in one very specific situation, and this separation from Radha, between Radharani, which she feels, and Krishna towards her. Krishna. So this Bhavolasa is so sublime because the Manjaris, the maid servants of Shimati Radharani, are always with Radhika, like their shadows. But they are so important in the moments when Radharani feels separation from Krishna. Even like Goravani said, even when they are together. And this kind of viraha which Radhika has in that moment is completely devastating. It's like burning forest fire, you know. And no one can tolerate this burning fire of separation when she is with Krishna. But only her kaya vyuh, only her expansion of her love, expansion of her compassion, expansion of, of her honey-like stream of Mahabhav, which is constantly flowing. So, Many things can be said about this. But Gudurdev asked me to share something about this Gopi Bhav, which Tarunji so nicely chose these words and read. You see how it starts, actually. This verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. O oh, dearly beloved one, so this is the mood of Sakibhav. They want they are to be lovers of Krishna, and they why? Because they want to give him a pleasure. How? With all her bodies. My body, I am offering to you for your pleasure and enjoy in that body. For that reason, they say, we will put your lotus feet on our breast, not on our head, not on our feet, not on our belly, on our breast, because we know how much erotic desires are condensed in your heart. And this is our also desire to fulfill that desire. But Manjaris never ever desires even in a dreams such kind of benediction, such kind of situation. They don't have desire to put the Krishna's feet on their little breasts, small breasts, not the big ones like a gopis have. Manjaris doesn't like that, 
even in the dreams they don't want. But they are always meditating and embracing in their hearts, in their breasts. Radharan is soft, tender, loving, honey-like lotus feet. And in that way, Taruji said, in that way, all Radhika's qualities through her emotions are manifests in Manjaris. They are made from Radhika's qualities. No one who didn't receive the Radharani's qualities can become Manjari. And how can we receive Manj Radharani's qualities? Through her Manjaris. If we want constantly and constantly and very stubbornly to approach Radharani directly, nothing will happen. This is not Rupa Anuga and the process. But to put the lotus feet of Guru Manjari on our small breasts of man like a Manjari is starting point, middle point, and end point of our spiritual practice. Because in that way, all Manjari emotions through all Guru Parampara from Rupa Nuga will infuse even our hearts. So in that moment, when our hearts are ready to receive all the quantity of Kripa, all the quantity of this honey, we will become bavolas rati because we will our heart will become illuminated with ulas of intoxication rati to serve our bhava mai because bhava mai can be served only with bhava from someone who is manifestation of seva rupaya So, many, many things can be said, of course. But I will use this moment to ask Tarunji to read the first sentence of Baba's commentary in the paragraph which, you, which is added. First sentence, according to degree and so on. Just so. So, I'm so happy that Gurudev asked Gauravani ji and, and Gauranga Sundra, that is so nice and nicely explained um, this thing. Uh, well, I just wanted to say that when I read the, you know, sometimes Baba is giving the sum, summary of the text. Here we have Sri Radha's lotus feet, the wealth of Govinda's life. So like you said, Gauranga ji, Gurudev's lotus feet, the wealth of our life. So this would be how I also could see that. So Baba is saying here, this I have to scroll back a little bit. Like many times you in many purports, he's saying this. Um I have to scroll and scroll. You no, know, the decree of a Bhakta's desire determines the degree of his delight. So that means that's the, the more Lopa, that's the point. The more we are eager and the more we desire the more we will feel that our daya coming into our heart. And I'm glad that you that you bring out the Guru Parampara, that without Gurudev's mercy, Nikunja Yuno Yayali Pia, this is such such a treasure without Gurudev's mercy. This Unatochwala Rasa can never take hold in our hearts, never. So I'm thankful. Thank you, Goravani. And 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 Goranga and Gurudev for naming those those Rasik Vaishnavas to enrich this wonderful wonderful purport. And now Baba is cementing 
Babala Sarathi and Manjari Bar with the next paragraph in his purport is so wonderful and so straight. Um, the, uh, there is an endless stream of nectar flowing from the ocean of love, that is Latika's lotus feet, toward the surrendered devotees. And Baba is quoting now in, in, the, in this uh, book edition, there is one verse, but in his own purpose, Baba is quoting two verses which are cementing our Manjari Bhav Sadhana. Now in the book it said, Shilaragoda Das Goswami writes, in his Svasankalpa, Brakasha Stotram, Anaradya Radya Padambucha Renum, and so on, without worshipping. The dust of Radhika's lotus feet, one, without taking shelter of Brindavan, two, where her footprints are, and without conversing with those devotees whose hearts are grave with love for Swamini, how can one enter the mellows of the Sham Ocean? So he is giving here three elementary points without worshipping, without taking shelter of Radhika's lotus feet and worshipping the dust of lotus feet of Swamini, without worshipping and taking shelter of Vrindavan, and without Sadhu Sangha and Snikta and Satachiya, it's not possible that we can have this. These feet are Govinda Chivanadhana, the wealth of Govinda's life. And Baba is giving one more, one more paragraph he is giving in his uh, original sorry, purport. Could, could you, sorry, could you please repeat it step by step? These three steps. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One who does not worship the dust from Jirata's lotus feet is the first. W without taking shelter of Rindavan, where her footprints are, second. And third, without conversing with those devotees whose hearts are grave with love for her, how can one enter into the mellows of the Sham Ocean? And then Baba is giving one more verse of the Radharasa Sudhaniti in his original purport. It starts with our beloved uh, group name. The verse is 80 of Radharasa Sudhaniti. Baba is quoting verse 80 of Shishi Radharasa Sudhaniti. Radha Dasya Mapasya. One who tries for a relationship with Govinda without serving Ratha is like one who wants to experience the nectarious splendor of the full moon without the full moon night. So nothing. <laughs> Again, one who tries for a relationship with Govinda without serving Sri Rata is like one who wants to experience the nectarious splendor of the full moon without the full moon night. So you can never experience the full moon splendor if there is not the darkest night. Otherwise, what is the use of a full moon if the sky is bright? So here Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati is saying, without worshipping Swamini, you are lost. Same is saying, Naratam Das Thakur is saying the same thing. One who is not worshipped, I will stay away from those who are not exclusively devoted to the lotus feet of Swamini, I will stay away, he says in Prema Bhakti Chandrika. Alas, unmindful of her being the source of the waves in the river of love for Sham, they are able to obtain no more than a drop of the great ocean of nectar. So we should always put Swamini first. That is the meaning. Slowly, yes, slowly. Okay. Alas, unmindful of her being the source of the waves in the river of love for Sham. So they, those people who only worship Krishna without Radhika, they are not aware of the stream of honey which flows from Swamini's lotus feet. And therefore he says here, unmindful of her, of her being the source 
Na? She is the source. Gurudev always says, Ladini Shakti, personification of Ladini Shakti. She is the source of that stream of honey nectar. And without being conscious and without being exclusively devoted to the lotus feet of Swamini, like the mantras are, there is only one little drop of nectar. There is not the waterfall and not a huge stream of nectar available if you worship Krishna without Radhika. So this is, this is actually the summary of Manjari Bhav. So now Baba is saying again, this was the verse Radha Rasa Sutta Nidhi 80. Now back to the book. This feet are Govinda Jivana Dhana, the wealth of Govinda's life. Shri Krishna's senses are always absorbed in Sri Ratha's form, taste, sound, touch, and smell. Hence, he is named Govinda. I think this is a very wonderful definition, another one of the word Govinda. There are many, like, uh, uh, with the cows and all these things, but here this is very beautiful because he is absorbed in Radhika's form and taste and sound and touch, all his senses are immersed in the river of her love. He is called Govinda. Srila Rupa Goswami describes this in his Lalita Madhava. Sri Krishna told Sri Ratha, O Kalyani, auspicious, beautiful girl, your lips, which are as red as bimba cherries, to feed the sweetness of nectar. Your face is as fragrant as a lotus flower. Your words crush the pride of the cuckoo songs and your body that is the abode of all beauty is cooler than sandalwood paste. In this way, all my senses are finding pleasure in relishing your sweetness and beauty. Although Krishna always desires Radha, Goddess Yoga Maya arranges that she is difficult to get for him because she is married with another man. Kabu mile kabu namile daivera katana. This Parakya Rasa makes the mutual attachment of the hero and heroine deeper. Sometimes Radha is angry with Krishna and Krishna will pray to her, give me your generous lotus feet. Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram Gita Govinda making his own head more beautiful by placing Radha's lack-anointed lotus feet on it. Krishna sings, Hiyara majari uttera sera hiloli yape parashite chahitumara payera anguli. A wave of rasa comes up in my heart when I want to touch your toes. It is the quintessence of divinity when God wants to accept the lotus feet of Prema, of Prema's utmost manifestation, Sri Ratha, as the wealth of his life. So this seems contradictory for those who only worship Krishna because they would say, what? You know, this is the quintessence of divinity if Krishna take shelter at the feet of someone else. But actually, that is, Baba explained it, that is the highest, that is the highest aspect of Krishna. He says, this does not make Krishna inferior. Rather, it increases his superiority. That is the glory of Sri Radha, love personified. Baba is giving an explanation to this. Let me check 
it is going deeper in this point because it's a very beautiful point that actually the quintessence of the Godhead is to take shelter of Swamini's lotus feet. And this makes him even more superior. That is very beautiful. Let me check if I find it. One second. Yes, here. Here Baba is writing. Um, after tasting all this rasa maturia in Lila, Tripad Prabhunanda Saraswati Pad declared that Srimati's lotus feet are the treasure of Govinda's life. This is now from Papa's Bengali book. Loving devotion to God, who is eternal, omniscient, and ever blissful, has been celebrated for a long time. <laughs> Papa is very clever. Then he is saying, for a long time, God has been celebrated. Then, his acceptance of the feet of the one who loves him most as his greatest treasure is the very lifeblood of his divinity. I will read this again. It's wonderful. Loving devotion to God, that means Aishwari above, who is eternal omniscient and ever blissful has been celebrated for a long time. His acceptance of the feet of the one who loves him most, Radhika, as his greatest treasure is the very lifeblood of his divinity. So that is the highest aspect of Krishna's divinity that he accepts the lotus feet of Swamini as his highest goal. This in no way diminishing Krishna, but it is rather a sign of his great nobility. Very wonderful. I like this so much and I hope you can enjoy this also so much. This is, this is so deep. This is what Gurudev always is saying, that it doesn't make Krishna inferior, that he takes shelter, sometimes at the lotus feet of the manjari, sometimes he begs the manjaris for entrance in the Nikuncha. It is the quintessence of divinity when God wants to accept the lotus feet of Brahma's utmost manifestation, Sri Ratha, as the wealth of his life. So this was never ever given to anyone before the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, never. And with not before Baba was writing this. This is the highest aspect. It cannot go any higher. He, God himself, he is taking shelter at the lotus feet of Swamini. How beautiful and wonderful is that? That is the glory of Sri Radha, love personified. Sri Pat says, I will carry your feet on my head. And in this way, I will bring you to Shyama Sundara. It won't be difficult at all. Because your limbs are as light as cotton wool. And on top of that, I will be blessed with a shower of the honey of love that flows from your exquisite feet. And if Shirata says, I will know by myself when I feel pain in my feet. Why should you worry about that? Then Sripad will answer. You will be mad out of anxious love for Krishna and you won't know a thing. How can, who can speak like that with Swamini? Who can answer like that with Swamini? The Sakis can never talk like this. Lalita and Vishaka, they can never talk like this. You will be mad out of anxious love for Krishna and you won't know a thing. You will go out to worship Govinda, but you will see to it if the, if the wealth of his life, your lotus feet, are pained or not. Place that wealth of Govinda's life on my head. That will make Govinda happy. This is also a very deep point. Krishna will be very happy when the mantra is offering the head. 
to put the lotus feet on because that means humility. That means humility. That is the utmost sign of prema that the mantra is willing to protect Swamini by placing the lotus feet on her head. How, this is how low you can go. You go down with your head and you put feet on it. That is the perfect example of service personified in the mantras. That will Radhe, make the win. Radhe, yes, please, please. Because you just say, said one very important point. That the, the more low we are, we are more ready to receive mercy and love. The more higher we always try to be, the less ability is in our heart to receive a love. And Krishna here, through his own example, is showing that when he yes. allowed his devotee to conquer him with his love, he voluntarily takes humble position and sits close by the lotus feet of, of his most beloved and putting on the, his head, on his heart, on his chest. You know, Gopis wants to put his chest, his feet on their chest, their breasts. But we can see here how Krishna, this is our Krishna, Manjari's Krishna. They're very happy when they see how Krishna is putting Radharani's feet on his breast, on his heart. So this is possible only in Vrindavan. And Krishna is taking this role, rejecting all his supremacy on all other places, but he is taking this role of dear Lalita, careless prince, because in that way he knows this is the way how I can receive Rajavasi's love the most. If I, sur if I surrender to my mother, I will receive motherly love to the utmost. If I surrender to my friends, I will receive the utmost of friendly love. If I surrender to my most beloved Shiradika, I put her honey-like lotus feet on my head, on my heart. Then I will receive all her love, Madanakya Mahababa, craziness. And also I want to re reciprocate. I want to give her but suddenly he found, like Suniti said, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot do that completely. I have to take a role of Gora to relish more and more and more deeper Radharani's love. So Krishna in Vrindavan is completely different than from Krishna in Vaikuntha, Dvaraka, and so on. Prabhupada is going so far that he is saying that. It's very nice. It's helped me so much. No one is calling Krishna Krishna in Vaikuntha and in Dvaraka. Only in Vrindavan, only Rajavasis are calling him Krishna. Because Krishna means sweet, beautiful, attractive. But in Dvaraka, he is Dvaraka Dish. In Vaikuntha, he is, I don't know, Narayan, or so on and so on. But no one is calling him because this is not the mood of that places. Only in Vrindavan, when he is only sweet, 
And why he's so sweet? Because he is re humbly receiving the love of Rajavasis, especially Radharani. Because he wants to be her disciple. He doesn't want to be disciple of Rukmini or Lakshmi or the, no, he wants to become disciple of Radhika. Radhika is Prema Guru Amishishanat. Radhika is my guru. Only she can teach me the all depthness of love. And I happily want to dance according to her wish. So this is humility. So if Krishna is taking such position, humble position, what to speak about us? And only like Taranji said in the beginning, only humility can close these holes in this patra, in this pot of our heart. And then we are coming to this point. The more devotee is eager, he will be able to receive more tripa. And eagerness, it's not a mode of materialistic passion. Eagerness is the sign of humility and sign of condensed love. Eagerness is the sign of attachment. Eagerness is the sign of close association with those who are already on that position. It's not the mood of passion, materialistic rajogun. It's eagerness full of humbleness. It's not separate. So Krishna is giving here, Tarunji read it to us, Krishna giving us, take example, take the shelter of the honey lotus feet, because in that honey lotus feet are the stream, which is completely, in which completely flowing makara anand flowing this strong desire why krishna is drawing makara fishes on radhika's breasts because they are carriers of cupids and he understands that from her breast also honey is coming. From her eyes the honey is coming. From her hands, embraces, keeps, lips, because she is embodiment of honey. Mahabhava, honey. So this Krishna Manjaris wants to worship, who is completely conquered by love, Radha's love. Radha. Gauravaniji, please. Because you made such nice points, I want to connect on that. Because even from the pores of Radharani, the highest Mahabhav is emanating. So what to speak of the feet? The lotus feet, there's the biggest stream of her mercy and of her love. And the Manjari wants to be the shadow. Why? First of all, Without that stream, you can never understand the feelings. You can never get the feelings of Radharani. You can never enter into the Sevaras because that stream is actually bringing the Sevaras in its purest form. And if this is not streaming through us, 
then it cannot get a form. So it needs that blaze of shelter. And the other side, we want to carry that soft and sweet lotus feet. So we have to be under her feet. We have to be the shadow. That she will not directly have to step on the path. And in this way, we will have the impress of her lotus feet all over in our hearts. Actually, all our feelings, because we have a body of transcendental feelings, all her feelings are our existence, or our existence are all her feelings. How to see it? It's a kind of meditation which actually we want to do. So this is our real existence, like Gurudev always say, we are the shadow of Swamini. Thank you all. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you, Guranga Sumer and Tarun Baba for actually squealing such a wonderful, sweet topic. So I will repeat the last uh, few sentences. Um, there's also one really, really deep meaning inside the last sentence. So, and if Shirata says, I will know by myself when I feel pain in my feet, why should you worry about that? Then Sripad answers, he's now fully in the kinkari mood. You will be mad out of anxious love for Krishna and you won't know a thing. You will go out to worship Govinda, but, you, but will you really see to it if the wealth of his life, your lotus feet, are pained or not? Place that wealth, those lotus feet of Govinda's life on my head. That will make Govinda happy. So in the next sentence, there is also very deep stuff. In this way, Sri Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur shows concern over Govinda's happiness also by praying for Radha's lotus feet on his head. So this means actually how are we serving the Lord? By serving Swamini. This is Manjari Bhav. We are never serving directly to Krishna, but here Prabhupada Saraswati Baba is giving us the example. We are satisfying Krishna by serving Radhika. So this is the whole summary of, of Manjari Bhav. No? In this way, Sripad shows concern over Govinda's happiness by praying for Radha lotus feet on his head. So he makes Krishna happy by putting the lotus feet of Swamini on his head by directly serving Swamini. In this way, there are hundreds of meanings of this verse. Blessed is this maidservant, blessed is her service. And thus is the end of the uh, explanation. Jai Ho. Someone wants to share more, please. Chayananda Maharaj, say something. If he's here, please. Don't hide. Thank you, Tarun Baba. Very nice. And Jayananda Maharaj, I give. Or you, please, Kukadev, please share you also something. Please. So, so nicely described, you know, Tarun Baba and the Gauranga Sundara and the Gaurabani. I was just completely observing, you know, uh, Swamini and Manjari Baba's sweetness. So, thank you very much. And actually, I was feeling why we are serving Gurudev. 
And then I was thinking, why we are serving Radhika? And through Radhika, we can please Krishna. Why we are serving Gurudev? We are, we are practicing Manjariva. We are through Gurudev, we please Radhika and Radhika's Moham. So we are practicing this, this mood. We are not to do a, we are shadow of our Guru Manjari, our Guru Dev. We are shadow, we want to be shadow of our Guru Manjari. We want to be shadow of our Swamini. So after, you know, hearing, so why we have to take Anugatya, you know, the lotus feet of uh, Shri, Shri Guru Dev. So this is uh, because uh, Shri Guru Dev is a very dear maid servant of Swamini. So, and through, through, through Shri Guru Dev, we can get this Manjari Baba. This Parampara system is so perfect, you know. So, and uh, through Guru Dev, we can get his feeling. Shri Guru's feeling is Shri Rupa Raghunata's feeling, especially Raghunata's, Turashi Manjari's feeling. And this feeling it describes uh, this uh, Birapaks Manjari and uh, this Radharasa Stanidi. So I got more deep understanding. So thank you very much, Tarun Baba, and uh, Goranga Sundra, and Gonabari, and uh, other devotees. Rade, Rade. Gurudev, can you share something? We all want that you have the last points. Please, Gurudev, if you are merciful. Actually, in short, I can say you what Krishna cannot do in his pastime, it happened when he come as a Chaitanya. Mm. That time, he took the mood of Manjari. What is the thing? He took the mood of Radhika, that is taking the mood of Radhika, <coughs> is taking the mood of Guru. And when I follow the Guru, that is the mercy of Manjari Bhav. Before I listen, before all the books, the God is the goal and the Way is the love. All center is the love. All guru. But here I see the love is the goal and God is in the center of this love. This is Chaitanya. And that is Audharya. Radharani herself come in Chaitanya. When we see Krishna, we don't understand Chaitanya. The day we will understand is a Radhika herself is a Chaitanya. All will be crystal clear. And this happened to me after reading, reading the Baba book, Anantas Babaji book of Vilap Kusumanjali and Radhara Sudhani. And this is the grace of Tarun Baba, who inspired me for doing this. And honestly, then we realize more and more deep what is Manjiri Bhav. Mahaprabhu appearance is the giving Radha Dasi, not Krishna's. But still I see all practicing about the 5,000 years back, Gopiva, not Mahaprabhu followers, still not. Sorry to say, they no realize, no understand. <coughs> and they will never understand without reading the book of Anandas Babaji and going deep in that to understand Till the sthai bhav will not come, fixed nature will not come in Manjari bhav. Who is Mahaprabhu? 
वाट इज उन्नत उज्जवल उन्नत उज्जवल रसा वॉज बिफोर ऑल्सो उन्नत उन्ना उज्जवल रसा वॉज द बट नॉट उन्नत रसा वट इज दैट उन्नत उन्नत मीन्स इज ए डेवलप फ्रॉम द उज्जवल रसा इज ए उन्नत सो उज्जवल रसा नहीं द You see that Ujjwal Rasa is Sakhi Bhav, Gopi Bhav is Ujjwal Rasa. Sri Mat Bhagavad is telling about that. But who believe in the Sastra, they want to stay 5,000 years back. They don't believe in the Mahaprabhu works. This is the problem. In modern Gauri, Gauri Avas, Vaishnav, Sorry to say, I don't know what is modern and traditional. Jananda Maharaj, no. Jananda Maharaj. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So we are asking Mahanidhi Baba before. Because Mahanidhi Baba was uh, practicing modern, modern practicing, he's saying IGM. IGM means Iskon and Godemata. So, what is the difference of traditional line and uh, modern line? Main thing we found out: traditional line, uh, no, like modern line. Is teaching is more or less sadaka they have practice because they don't they don't know swarupa and swarupa siddhi. But the traditional line was by the mercy of Guru Dev, by the mercy of uh, Radharani, we could understand what is swarupa and what is swarupa siddhi. In this relationship. We could practice Raga Bhajan. Means say I may say we may say modern line is more or less external activity, external bhakti, and the traditional line is both we do external activity and uh, internal activity. But traditional line was more stressing internal uh, practice. Especially before, I don't understand what is bhajana kriya. We are. I was thinking bhajana kriya is just thing, just chanting, chanting, you know, maha mantra or chanting gayatri. But actually, bhajana kriya is bhajana and kriya. And uh, Anantas Baj Maharaj was describing what is bhajan. Anandas Baj Maharaj is, describes, I think, Pirapak Manjari 52 bus. Bajan means fix our mind at one point and attracted. So means Bajan means fix ourselves one Stai Baba, one Baba, one Stai Baba. And then mind was attracted one this Ragatmika Bhakti or or Radhika's sweetness, or Radhika's service of sweetness. So, so traditional line was more, more clearly describes this internal practice. And uh, we are reading uh, hidden parts of devotion. And then uh, leaders of ISKCON there are so many questions and is it so we are always meditating Pabupada and then is this is this Raganuga Bhajan? Then Naren Maharaj say no this is Baidi and then Iskon 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 leaders they don't they again question why Baidi Bhakti because they don't know Gurudev's Swarupa, they don't know my Swarupa. So therefore, their practice is external. 
like a Baidi Bhakti. So, Raganuga Bhakti, especially traditional line, is very clear. Our, our Swarupa and Ishtadeva Swarupa and our Guru Manjari Swarupa, etc. So, this is very uh, different. And uh, by the mercy of Anandas Bhaj Maharaj, by the mercy of, you know, our Guru Dev Sadhu Maharaj, and uh, by the mercy of uh, Anand Gopal Goswami Maharaj, all other Acharyas, we could understand. And also, you know, our Tarun Baba was you know, always encouraged us. And uh, our, our Gora Bani and Goranga Sundara, they are very, very fixing. I'm learning from, from all of you, Rade Rade. Thank you so much, Tainanda. Wonder, wonderful explanation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can I ask you, you Tarim Baba? Uh, I'm wondering why uh, this commentary of uh, um, Baba is not inside of the Rasa very Rasa easy. The needy. If you have, yeah. if you have the book with you, you have the book with you. So when you have, when you have the edition of the book. So it's written in the first line with English commentary based on the Bengali commentary made by Shimatu Sutandas Adhikari, Prabhupada, Srila Ananda Gopal Goswami, and Radha Kund Mahan Pandit, Srimad Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj. So this book, Advaita, Advaita translated from three different kinds of commentaries. Most of it is from my Gurudev, most of it. But not, it is not the exact same version Baba put out in Bengali. So my godbrother Hari Charanda is in America. He is now translating the original Bengali book only with Baba's commentary. Therefore, it's different. It's not different in the conclusion and in the Siddhant and in the Ras, but it is different in the words. So when I'm happy, I, I pray the, that, that he can finish it. He is now, I think, going to be 70s, maybe early 70. He's 69, maybe something like that. And the book has 272 verses. So I hope Radhika blesses him that he can finish it because he is right now the only one who is translating straight out of the Bengali. So he has a blog. I put the verse on Radha Dasyam. I think you can read on his blog, the, the, the commentary of Radha Rasa Sudanidi. It is, it is really nice to have only Baba's words, but it is, of course, wonderful to have all the three tikas, all the three commentaries in the published book. But I would rather have every, every verse uh, commented on by Baba. The Bengali is there, and now I hope maybe soon, let's see how soon, <laughs> how soon he will progress. But I like it very much if we can hear the direct, direct uh, a part from the Bengali book. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Radhe Dhanavad. Radhe Radhe, my dear. Gauravani also. Thank you very much. Jananda Ji, Gurudev. Radhe Radhe, all the devotees. Thank you all so much. Tarun Baba. Special thanks to share this with us. This is really like taking jams out of the box and sharing it with others. Thank you so much. Uh, Rade Rade, can you hear? Yes. So I want to share one thing. Gurudev asking me to share one thing. So 
あ、グルデーブズオーダーワンチャイタニアチャリタベンガリバージョンえ、アイシンクラダゴミンダナタチャイタニアチャリタムリタンそうワンデーグルデーブズアスキングミプレイズえ、リサーチファティザプレマビラ